I knew I was going to be an artist uh, since I was little. I was um, living in the Czech Republic and uh, since I could hold a pencil I would uh, doodle and draw and actually my grandparents uh, would buy me these massive uh, coloring books and uh, rather than coloring them I would just redraw them. So I had a big stack of um, just blank paper and I would just look at the page uh, that I was supposed to color and redraw it and then as soon as that was done I'd go on to the next page so I pretty much copied an entire uh, coloring book and um, then um, you know my parents were saw that I was really interested in drawing so they um, would encourage me to keep drawing till I uh, till I actually got you know um, through high, high school, um, you know, still my strongest subject was, was drawing, it was my biggest interest. And uh, when I decided, or I told my parents I was gonna go to art college, that's when they were just like, whoa. <laughs> um, no, maybe, you know, a, a different career. So they, they were a little worried about, you know, um, life of an artist. Um, um, not not an easy path for anyone. Um, my dad is a, a welder, a tradesman, so um, you know, in my family, there's always been kind of like a a, a tradesman uh, path. So um, my dad's kind of expectation was for me to follow in that uh, same same kind of path. So there was a bit of a struggle between our relationship. Um, I was very stubborn and um, you know my passion was was drawing and uh, so I decided to go to art college despite uh, <laughs> the uh, um, suggestions um, to pursue like a trade school. Um, so we, uh, I enrolled in Alberta College of Arts in Calgary, which is where my parents and I lived. And um, I got in, which was what the big, you know, the big step is you submit a portfolio, um, and then you just kind of wait and see. Um, so then I uh, went through art college. Uh, I decided actually I was going to go into visual communications and um, graphic design, basically. Um, even though in my heart I really wanted to take drawing, uh, drawing was my strongest um, subject, probably, um, from years of just drawing and drawing. Um, but I think that was more kind of like a compromise with my parents or maybe with myself, um, you know, there's more opportunities um, when you finish school uh, in visual communications than perhaps painting or, or drawing. Anyway, in that time, like this was uh, early 90s, so um, I took visual communications, kind of like a, uh, it was a safer way to uh, go through school. And I am glad that I did, because um, I, I still took drawing and painting as electives and you know I, I knew that um, my drawing skills were pretty strong um, but I did learn a lot of different technical skills uh, through visual communications that I probably wouldn't have if I had just stayed as a major in, in drawing or painting even though I spent most of my uh, school uh, in my friend's studio and their uh, painting studios and drawing studios just because I like the uh, the atmosphere more. It wasn't really like a classroom setting or anything like that. It was just um, open space and you just kind of sit on a couch and, and work, which is kind of like what I like to do as opposed to having a teacher walking around the classroom. And, um, but um, yeah, so I finished um, visual communications uh, in 92. And in my last year of school, I really um, got drawn to um, doing uh, renderings. Um, so basically architectural illustrations and renderings. Um, usually in your last year of school, you have to decide what you're gonna uh, 
kind of pursuit because we dabble in so many different um, fields. Um, we had computer graphics, we had uh, design, we had um, illustration. And one of the things that we kind of touched on was architectural illustrations. And uh, at the time, um, the instructors that I had, um, I really liked. Uh, and uh, you know, they, they were um, very supportive um, in, in that field. And also, they saw that you know my passion for for drawing buildings, you know, and that it was a it was a good fit for me. So when I finished school, my first job was uh, working for uh, an architect in Calgary, uh, doing architectural illustrations. And um, he was probably the biggest um, well-known architect in Calgary at the time. And for me, it was very nerve-wracking. <laughs> it was the first, first big job out of art college. Um, it was a very small firm. So it was just um, uh, me, uh, the draftsman, and um, the owner and his wife. And they were mostly out uh, doing um, uh, meetings. And so I was pretty much left alone to, to do the renderings. and. Uh, um, it was, a, it was pretty stressful. It was, uh, I had no real guidance, and um, as much as I loved being in the in the field, I just I wasn't ready to just be left alone. So I um, um, worked for worked for that firm for about six months, but my nerves just couldn't take it. <laughs> I just I didn't know if I was doing a good job or not. It was very little kind of interaction, and uh, so I, I started working um, actually as a freelance architectural illustrator for a while, and um, then um, I also got into um, graphics, uh, working for companies doing you know, computer graphics, layouts, and so I completely got sidetracked, um, um, kind of followed where you know I was able to kind of make a living as opposed to what I wanted to do, um, uh, and I was kind of stuck because architectural illustrations were kind of like um, an art that was disappearing, and the more I kind of looked for um, you know different companies to hire me as a as a full time architectural illustrator. They either had somebody that's been there for years and they only needed one person, or uh, they um, were switching to computer-generated artwork on AutoCAD. So then I had to decide whether I was going to go back to school and learn uh, computer, um, basically computer renderings and AutoCAD, and uh, decided to uh, take drafting because um, I still liked working with my hands, and I was doing really well. Um, but after my first year, I realized, you know, I, I don't want to be a, an architect. I want to be just the person who does the renderings and the drawings, because that's really what I wanted to do. Um, so it was kind of like this struggle, like ever since I finished school, I was kind of, um, you know, I, I, I knew I wanted to do something in the arts. Um, and there's you know, quite a bit of opportunities. So I did a little bit of everything, and I did a lot of jobs that weren't art-related. Um, at the time, I was doing a lot of bike racing, which was um, kind of my primary uh, focus at the time. I was still young and and um, liked traveling. So I've been now bike racing for about 25 years. Um, but uh, I was doing a lot of traveling to Europe, um, initially to visit my family there, and then um, coming back and going to, you know, working for four months for one of the companies, either doing graphic layouts or I worked for sign shops doing layouts and some of the um, um, kind of production parts of things. So um, it was, at that time, it was kind of just a way for me to be able to 
travel and bike race. So having like an income. Um, so I wasn't really thinking about you know my ultimate uh, career because I I mostly just wanted to race while I while I was still young and while I still had my fitness always in the back of my mind thinking okay well when I'm done racing I will you know pursue my arts a little bit more seriously um, so um, you know in all of this I was doing a lot of traveling and get a lot of time to kind of reflect uh, on what I want to do and um, you know I was mostly doing realism um, because that's that's the only thing I knew really was um, just copying what's already there and um, to me it was very kind of natural as my strong strong uh, uh, talent and I was quite a perfectionist as a as an artist especially in the renderings you have to do um, you know really nice um, presentations for the for the clients so it's 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 what the client sees uh, first and so um, a lot of work goes into that and uh, but as a as an artist you're kind of like your worst critic um, so I was very um, almost too critical of my work, where if, if it wasn't right, I would just crumple it up. And I don't think I have anything from my school left. I threw it all out. <laughs> it's either, you know, even if I liked it, and perhaps I, I got a you know, good mark, but a bad critique, I would throw it out. <laughs> anything uh, negative around that, I, would, I wouldn't be happy with. So, um, I was kind of, um, you know, through years of cycling, um, one of the things that I was always kind of uh, doing is spending a lot of time on my bike in the prairies and um, one of the things that kind of drew me or drew, caught my eye was like the old barns and broken broken down buildings in the fields and it's pretty much the only thing you have to look at um, when you're when you're on your bike and just the shapes of like the uh, the roofs that were um, weathered from from snow, um, they just they just had so much personality and so much character that um, I don't know maybe it was just constantly as a visual it was in the back of my mind and I just found them really beautiful and inspiring and interesting and and. Um, I guess one day I just I uh, I went home and and did a drawing that was very rough and loose and it didn't have any straight lines and it was just kind of um, you know very much like what the barns would look like uh, just these organic shapes and um, I really liked it so um, I was actually in Victoria visiting at the time I was looking after a friend's dog. And I was at the Wildfire Bakery, and I was doing my second drawing. Um, and a gentleman walked by and saw me working on uh, a drawing of St. John the Divine Church, which is what I was drawing. And he said he'd like to buy that. And that was probably the first piece of art I've ever sold. And not even, you know, with the intention of selling it, um, but I was very flattered. <laughs> it was just like, wow, uh, you know. And this is probably about 12 years after I finished art college, because um, everything that I did was like a, a job. Um, so to be just kind of working at a coffee shop or you know the bakery, and, and somebody you know liked what I was working on was, was very uh, very flattering, and. Um, so uh, I met the gentleman uh, the very next day after I finished the drawing, and uh, he gave me fifty dollars for my drawing, and I was, I was just, I was <laughs> yeah, I was pretty happy, and it um, uh, was very, very fast, very quickly. It um, um, kind of progressed from there. I uh, went home and did a number of drawings um, in this way, and a lot, 
and again, I was in Victoria, so most of my first drawings were of Victoria uh, images. Um, but I was living in Calgary, so after my visit here, I moved back to, I went back home and um, I was working uh, again for a, a sign company. Um, by this time, I had worked for this company on and off for about 10 years. And um, I was production manager at, at um, one point for about three years. So I did a lot of hands-on. Um, I had lots of access to different tools. And, um, um, and one of the things was, um, you know, now that I'm going to be um, kind of pursuing this uh, art form is, um, how am I going to frame my work? Because framing is really expensive, you know. And um, um, I had access to routers. Um, and we were, you know, we were, would make signs out of different materials, and and uh, wood seemed to be the uh, the obvious choice for for me. Because um, one of the things um, I kind of started off with. I'm uh, still painting on square canvases at first and making irregular frames, um, still kind of around square shape. But um, I think I was talking to my employer at the time and we we're just kind of bouncing off ideas. And, and um, in that conversation, we, um, I think is when I uh, kind of came with up with the idea was to make my frames kind of suit the artwork and uh, having the tools to be able to do that was, you know, I, was, I couldn't sleep for weeks, <laughs> I would just uh, design frames for the many drawings that I had already done and I was just routing frames and making frames and then I, you know, after two weeks I was like, I have to start painting, I've got all these frames, i got nowhere to, to put them and um, so that's how the frames kind of um, came about, and, and again, it's you know it's the uh, having that experience of working in different fields. Like if I never worked in a sign shop, if I only did you know uh, artwork, um, I probably would have been a different artist altogether. Um, um, so every little job that I had kind of contributed to what you see in the work now and uh, eventually I just kind of like initially I just worked as a kind of part-time artist full-time you know sign maker uh, still bike racing so there wasn't a lot of time for painting so my first year I maybe did about five paintings the next year maybe seven or ten but uh, as I started to kind of see um, the work kind of slowly develop, um, I wanted to do more and more. And so I would actually cut back my hours, um, uh, you know, ask if I could work part time or four days a week. And then it was down to three days a week and then two days a week. And, um, um, it wasn't some, it took, it took a long time to kind of take the leap into becoming a full-time artist. Um, my wife, Dana, um, is very supportive and uh, she had a full-time job at the time and um, she um, basically uh, encouraged me to just cut the ties. She knew how unhappy I was, you know, waking up and going to work when I knew um, I don't know, in your being you just know that, you know, you want to create and I just, after 10 years or more, um, just kind of wondering what I'm going to do with my art, now finding that, that spark, um, I just didn't want to stop, I just, you know, every time I was at work I was thinking about oh, this time I could be working on my paintings and, um, I was pretty ambitious and motivated, and I still am to this day. Um, and um, then, yeah, eventually I just um, cut the ties and, 
and um, worked full time as an artist. And my wife would support me, and um, you know, every time I would sell something, it would kind of motivate me to to paint more things. And and I started having more and more kind of um, shows because I was able to have more paintings on display. So that was pretty exciting too. And um, then we moved to Victoria. Um, and again, I, whenever you move cities, you have to basically start all over. Um, uh, so I was working part time again, and pretty unhappy. <laughs> and then uh, again, uh, once my once my wife, you know, had a, a, a steady job, a full time job that um, we'd be able to get by, I went back to uh, just working on my paintings and. Um, I was pretty productive. I would um, say I would. I did, on average, about 45 to 55 paintings a year. Um, that's when I was just in my studio and painting, and um, so I got a lot of uh, painting done in the last uh, um, four or five years. And uh, I don't do as many now. Um, just because uh, during the summer we uh, we do uh, like an art market that basically takes up six months, uh, so my productivity has kind of dropped quite a bit. So, but it's not about the number of paintings that I do. It's it's, um, it's how many paintings I have time to do because um, um, I literally literally have hundreds of drawings that are waiting to be uh, paintings because when I'm not painting I, I like to be you know drawing of like, things that can potentially one day be paintings again and that's uh, that pretty much brings us to the show <laughs> the 10 year show so the show is basically laid out um, in a sequence from uh, chronological order uh, from my earlier paintings and um, a lot of them, the earlier paintings were from my travels uh, to Europe and um, I actually very first painting was a painting of uh, Christchurch Cathedral here in Victoria and that was uh, kind of a my introduction to color. Um, I was still very timid with colors. I uh, um, only used like grays and little hints of if, if any color at all, um, which you wouldn't be able to tell now. Now it's all about color. Um, so I did a lot of uh, European um, paintings, um, again from when I was back home in the Czech Republic and um, through cycling I got to go to a lot of really great places. Um, and then as we get further down, um, you can see uh, some of the barns that I uh, used to photograph and, and see. Uh, so the barns themselves, um, some of them are pretty much look exactly like the barn looked in real life, with a little, maybe a little bit of exaggeration, like the, the barn, uh, uh, barnier stry at night uh, with the snow scene. Um, I kind of like incorporated the fence into uh, that kind of um, same kind of feel as the barn had. And um, still that one is one of my favorite uh, paintings. Uh, just the richness of the colors. And by this time I was really all about color and felt a little bit more confident in, in colors and brightness and um, kind of wasn't shying away from it. And, and um, then um, here you can still see that I was, I was kind of living in, in Calgary and, and so like the, the green elevators, um, which to me are like the lighthouses of the prairies. Um, again, uh, I would be kind of drawn to the colorful ones, um, especially, you know, um, sunrise or sunset, where the colors were even more intensified by the sun. Um, and then uh, we get over to the area where we moved to Victoria. So there's a lot of uh, 
local places and of course the John Street Bridge uh, which is probably the piece that I'm most kind of recognized or known for in Victoria just because it's such an iconic uh, building in itself and uh, we are going to be losing the bridge and uh, most people's first um, work that they've seen of mine was of the John Street Bridge um, I believe on the cover of Focus magazine, uh, which circulates around Victoria, and then it ended up on Facebook, and um, people have seen, seen the, my rendition of the bridge. Not a lot of people knew who made it or who done it. Um, so slowly, you know, people are still kind of making the connection or uh, seeing other work and wondering, oh, that must be the artist who did the Johnson Street Bridge. So that's. Uh, probably uh, my most popular image um, and also you can kind of see um, at around this period I'm starting to work a little bit larger um, so again probably you know has to do with confidence and also um, working um, in a like a larger space uh, whereas before um, when I was working as an artist part time it was kind of like just a small space was devoted to painting but as um, uh, kind of became an artist more full time a larger space was devoted to to being able to create the work so I'm really enjoying working larger and that's why I'm working on canvas a lot is um, the wood um, gets quite heavy um, to do the custom frames uh, once you get over three feet um, and also the canvas lends itself to like really large paintings that I can um, basically make the image more dynamic the, it seems like the bigger it is the more kind of um, dynamic it, it looks so my most recent pieces behind me are mostly on canvas and um, Another reason why I'm kind of moving away from the, the frames slowly is um, just the, the amount of paintings that I have, it's easier to store canvas ones as opposed to uh, the custom framed ones. So uh, even though I still, you know, will be making the custom shaped frames, I won't be nearly as, um, as often as I did in the past because there are a lot of work, a lot of sanding, um, so I'm also trying to save my arms a little bit. Uh, <laughs> a lot of uh, kind of forearm and wrist pain from years of sanding. Um, so I have to kind of think about, do I want to spend my time sanding and making frames or painting? So, especially with um, limited uh, time, it seems like lately.